Oh my God. Israel is Madagascar. Are you kidding? Why is Israel Madagascar? <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Lakuya here and welcome back to another Hearts of Iron 4 video. And from that, welcome back to Kaiser Redux, our A to Z playthrough. The game in which Germany won World War I and the world has gone to absolute hell. Continuing our A to Z playthrough of all this, there's still many different nations that we have yet to play and we are still in the seas. The last time that we did this, we did the Commune of France. And so the next thing that is up on our list that actually does have a focus tree is something that honestly, from all the focuses that I've done in here is probably one of the most chaotic things that I've ever seen in my life. And we're gonna make it worse. The Congo. Yes, my friends, what was effectively Belgium's playground for the later half of the 19th century and going into the early 20th century has turned into an even more dangerous and condemned playground, one that is uh, ba barely holding on. As you can probably imagine from a state that was never really all that stable to begin with, uh, losing a war doesn't exactly help oneself. The home state of Belgium or Flanders Wallonia is now under the firm thumb of the Kaiser, which means that, well, so by that logic are we. The question becomes for the state, do we side with the Germans? Do we try to side with the Belgians and bring back the old rule? Or do we do something different? Well, let's see what happens and buckle up because people, this is gonna be a wild ride. I think that what we're going to do for the majority of this game is that we're going to try and keep ourselves to over here in Africa and really do whatever it is that we can to unite things around us, if that is indeed possible. Europe is going to burn no matter what it is that I do, so we might as well start roasting some rubber trees around here. From the very beginning of the game, we are barely holding on, which is drastically hurting our stability. We have less political power because the Welt Creek was a disaster. Uh, the army freaking hates us because it's just the, you know, public police force army thing. And then on top of that, and the Iron Cross looms over Congo, which means that the German Germans are actually going to support us in our industry, but simultaneously it's going to hurt our ability to do anything independence wise. Still though, 50% factory output and 50% construction speed, holy crap, that is really strong. It would have to be considering that we have literally no stability whatsoever and are consistently being hurt by everything. We also start the game with two research slots, which is pretty dumb, but okay, you know what? Let's go ahead and get our basic research and construction stuff out of the way because that's gonna be necessary. In fact, you know what? We're not even gonna go with the research one immediately. We're gonna switch that over and we're gonna go with construction. There we go. Just basic stuff out of the way. Civilian factory wise, we are gonna wanna focus on infrastructure because we, I mean, we actually have some really good construction bonuses, but also simultaneously, I'm sure that Black Monday is gonna destroy us. So to that end, let's go ahead and start building things up here in the Congo. Military factorized, we only have one, so we might as well just throw that onto guns, because I mean, we're probably gonna need that here for at least a little bit in the first place. And our focus tree. I am forced here to play the Congo because Congo actually does have a focus tree, which that's the stipulation that we have of this A to Z, meaning I'm not gonna be doing anything that has a generic one. Nope, we, uh, we instead have to do the stuff that has interesting paths. <laughs> Ah, uh, Leopold. Ah, uh, you dirty dog, you. So yes, the game itself is going to focus on the multitude of paths that we have available to us, all of which determined when you continue to play as Congo, whether you go with the Africans, the Belgians and Europeans, if you side with the Germans, if you side more with the Belgians, if you try to do your own thing, whatever happens, happens. And the thing is, and what I found from some couple of my play tests through this, is that there are multiple different paths that you can take, and only by choosing certain other paths when everything goes to shit, do you actually get anything new. So we are going to destroy this country in order to build it into something even better. That means first things first, restore stability of the force publique. Due to the chaos that ensued in the wake of Mwami's Rebellion, which is the tribe that we have in here, Flemish Wallonians in Elizabethville quickly formed the force public out of the ashes of the German Ascaris to resist his attack. While we successfully repulsed the assault, the FP is only a shadow of its former self, which means that even with us having a large population, we can't effectively do anything with it. Let's fix that. The fate of Middle African destiny. This is actually one of the nice things. If you play in Middle Africa and you play in this region, there is a decent chance that everything is actually not going to work out in your favor. So it does give you at least the option from the game to choose, hey, do I want everything to go to shit, which will give me an opportunity to do things, or no, we're gonna have it stay whole so that after Africa can remain under the thumb of the Europeans forever. No, I want chaos. Collapse, please. And so here is the setting, the dark heart of Middle Africa. For decades, the Flander Wallonians have been the sovereign lords of the Congo, since the reign of Leopold II to the modern Rickmans regime enforced by the Force Belique. However, since Belgium's loss in the Weltkrieg, their nation and their empire have been subservient to the Kaiser's will, for even Wilhelm's own son sits upon the Belgian throne. With this new war-forged reality, reality in place, the newly minted Flander Wallonians are allowed to keep their old colonial regime within the Congo intact and their hierarchies in one piece. But the new German element was forced into the system as overlords to the ingrained Belgian regime. Over the years since the Welt Krieg, German influence has increasingly weathered the foundations of the Flander Wallonian regime, and the current governor, General Pierre Rickmans, has let the situation slowly spiral out of hand. With traditionalist in 
insurrections waging a guerrilla war in Katanga, Askari and small socialist groups actively protesting and campaigning for independence in Kivu and the capital, and with religious fanatics and rogue mercenaries gnawing at our roots in the north and west, the Vrishtats... The Vrishtat... That thing. Our government. The current situation is dubious, to say at least. Governor General Rickman must quickly deal with the major issues affecting the colony, lest it fall into chaos. Yet with the mismanagement of Dar es Salaam looming over us, it may be outside of our control. Regardless, our regime must soldier on and preserve the trinity colonial of God, gold, and civilization, lest we collapse into savagery and chaos as the ever-present Hun furthers its f or further forces its presence. Yeah, I, I wouldn't necessarily describe them as progressing the state of Congo, to be honest, if you know its history. From what I understand, it's probably going to happen. I'm not going to need this large army that I have here in the first place, so we're we're gonna go ahead and delete that. Yeah. Immediately after deleting that, I wonder if I can actually put stuff onto the international market because I'm sure if I, wait, can I buy from, oh, these are things that are already on here. And immediately with all those African weapons, I have market access to so many different countries. So hopefully they will actually go and buy all of my equipment. Jack up the price on all those guns, add them into the mix, and we'll see if anyone will actually go and buy them. Yeah, see, Ireland. Of course, Ireland wants to buy some guns. Yes. The Mwami plays his hand. Ash plumes from the pristine Katanga skies as the fire started by the Mwami forces spread to consume Kamina's southern district. The capital of the local colonial administrative province, Kamina was the local jewel of the Flanderolonian regime, with a burgeoning merchant quarter and a vibrant tapestry and woodworking industry fueled by skilled native workers now employed by the colonials. All of this prosperity has been erased in the wake of the Mwami's wrath, for he has resolved himself to make himself known in the minds of the imperialists forever as this aging king passed through his twilight years. Oh no, on the eve of this week's dawn, Mwami Katinga Mamuba Mushalia commanded his force to break their usual guerrilla tactics and instead rally and march on the Kamina in a show of force. Quickly overwhelming the meager force of elite garrison defending the city, these savage and bloodthirsty native warriors have begun to entrench deep into the heart of the city along its northern reaches as they burn the rest of the col a colonial hive to the ground. As a result, hundreds of lo loyal colonials have been slaughtered and much of our economic and military assets from the city have been completely destroyed. We must now decide how best to deal with this act of violence, and with Governor General Rickman's regime barely holding together as it is, we will surely have it be a test for his administration. For should he fail, the higher-ups back in Europe could always replace him. Yeah, as I said, everything is going to go to shit. Because we are alone in the Dark Continent, and the Germans do not want to help us. Oh, thank you. Thank you, buddies. Yes, we will just sell all of our equipment to you. The NKR denounces our regime. Okay, yeah, the uh, the more right-wing elements within the government uh, do not actually want to support us. All right, time to assault. And we do that, destroying everything inside and fixing bayonets. Which, in turn, forces the Mwami to retreat. It completely disorganizes them and our loyal troops. Well, I'm not even getting the options to choose anything from this. Okay, well, we just break through and apparently uh, we completely destroy the enemy. But the Mwami leader escapes. And in the process of that, we basically destroyed everything, making ourselves even more unpopular because collateral damage is only just a number. Who really cares? A return to the status quo. At long last, after a long cleanup operation and reconstruction campaign, the city of Kamina has been largely restored, save for the large amounts of tribal housing and farmlands that were forever lost. In fact, you know, everything burned to the ground. The dead have been buried, the walls of Merchant Quarter have been restored, and the garrison forces have been relieved and replaced. Though outrage against Rickman's regime is so raging, it has lessened since the initial conflict, and the relative calm that once existed there has begun to return. However, the Vrishstadt is still a disconnected, unstable, and chaotic colony. New dangers always around the corner. Order restored for now. Oh, also, I am realizing I need to demobilize my economy, but also I can join the Kaiser Wilhelm Society. That that is awesome for me because that means from the very beginning, actually, I will be able to, uh, with only two research slots, I'll actually be able to research things to build myself up at least a little bit. Very, very crucial step in the beginning because when you start the game with only two research slots, it's as important, oh God, Black Monday hits. Okay, as I was saying, it's the most important thing you can probably do is try and get as much research as you can to catch ahead. So joining a research society is massive because it means that if everyone else has something researched and you got like five or six members, you get a 50% bonus to that research. So it's crucial that you get that from the very beginning. Black Monday hits the Congo and our economy collapses. Great. Well, with the force public done, that means that we can now try and go and fix our economy, right? Wait, no. Fight mommy's influence, reward the Evelaires. Okay, so this is our political path that we get to choose whether we go with working with the Africans or full-on colonial dictatorship. How fun. Well, the funny thing is, is that despite our collapsing economy, I'm still able to actually construct things rather rapidly here. That doesn't really matter for me. So there is nothing for me to really fix with my 
my economy in the first place, is there? It looks like I cannot go down the political path for any of this until I get a new governor general election. So from that logic, I guess we do actually have to go down the economic path here. Okay, to that end, first things first, rekindle connections with the Kaiser. Let's see, with rekindle with the Kaiser done, that means, oh, oh my Lord. Plus 50% construction speed even for this for 100 days? I have 105% construction. You kidding me? That is massive. All right, well, I will take that. Uh, snap after that, access to the sea. Our economy is primarily based around the sale and export of various resources and materials that are extracted from the rich Congo. For this to continue, sea access is vital, yet there's an obstacle to this goal. There is but one large seaport in all the Congo. Unfortunately, recent developments in Leopoldville have left our main ports at the Matandi non-operational. We must find a way to export our goods or else our fragile economy could further slip into chaos. You don't say. Simultaneously, one of the things that we will be forced to do over here is actually demobilize our economy because yeah we no longer have the war support necessary to fuel war economy with access to the sea done now we have two options german bailout which means that we're going to align ourselves more closely with the german which will allow us to also construct a railway which is actually pretty nice or the belgian connection in which it's going to actually focus more on building our relations with belgium and also from this add infrastructure Ooh, i don't want to support the germans we're going to go with the belgian connection as the same people it's only natural that we seek to get closer to the work and develop alongside our Flander Wallonian brothers in Brussels, by promoting closer and more regular cooperation between our two administrations, we will succeed in developing our respective countries in hand. Indeed. Also, as soon as I have 150 political power, next up after that, I'd say industrial concern. We're gonna probably gonna go with the uh, Union Minero de Hot Cantanga, just the thing that allows us to get more construction of military and civilian factories and also more research speed. Just whatever it is that we can do from the beginning to increase the rate at which we research, because that's gonna be vital for us here. See, here's what I'm talking about with that research bonus, because because we avoided getting this initial research here for our uh, electronic and engineering, we get a 50% bonus, which is nice because everyone else already has this research in the first place, so it's easy for us to work with. Next step after that, because we did not support the whole German aspect, I can't do support Middle African integration, which is fine. What we need to do is the Congo comes first, because rather than seek research of the oh-so-beneficial German hegemony over Africa and our nation, we should instead look to strengthen ourselves economically, self-sufficiency, local cooperation with other African states, and constructing our own native industry shall be key for the new goals of the economy. What few funds we have should be directed in partnership with our allies towards the exploitation of the natural bounty of this land for our own profit, of course. The Congo is ours, and we Congolese, yeah, we Congolese, will come first over any foreign interests. Let's see that bypass these two focuses. So now, honestly, I'm just going to go ahead and do fight mommy's influence because we just want to be able to remove this as quickly as possible for once we do start our whole political situation. The mommy have been defeated and colonial rule has been reestablished. Tensions are high, however, between the Flemish Wallonians and the native Congolese population who urge for the abolition of European patronization. I don't know what you're talking about. Immediate next step, the diamond mines of Kivu. More civilian factories and also more resource gain and less consumer goods. Ah, see, and here is why I clicked it. Diamond mines of Kivu is almost done. We have a new governor general for the Congo. With the ever destabilizing situation growing worse in our Vistat, with each passing moment, the people of our colony have increasingly called for a new governor general election to be held. With faith in Rickman's regime faltering with each misstep and policy because he seems to screw up everything or with each new native riot that breaks out many within the colonial administration and settler population wish to wipe clean the current administration and replace it with a competent one however rickmans has long stood as a stalwart defender of congolese interest over favoring either berlin or brussels and if he were to be voted out the Vristat would likely greatly swing towards one of these two benefactors for aid and legitimacy to replace rickman stands two main alternatives either with their own agendas either the germans under von epp here of the weltkrieg or or a technocrat Belgian Flander Wallonian candidate. Interesting. The options that we have for those two things are rather interesting because on one hand, you can, you know, state the course here and maintain a decent balance with things, become entirely subservient to Germany, which I don't like, or pursue the whole Belgian aspect, which weirdly enough, the Belgians in this timeline want to actually work with and support the native population in comparison to everything that they did before. If you know, you know. Well, that sounds like a rather nice bet. So Leo Patelion, you shall become the new face the Congo with a technocrat in charge now. Oh, look at you. Look at this suave looking guy here. There's the diamond mines of Kivu. And now immediately the next step after that, that we're going to take, since we chose the technocrat, that means that we actually have to reward the Ebules, which these are the people that were the native Africans, like the native Congolese, who actually wanted to pursue more European education and specifically learn about, I'm not going to say enlightenment ideals, but modern thought and theory. They are the individuals that largely after the Congo in our timeline got its independence. These are the 
ones that were the only people that the state could actually rely on because they were the only ones with an actual education. It's become clear that we Europeans are not going to be remaining in Africa forever. Therefore, we have to prepare the African population for their approaching independence. By educating and promoting the Evelais, we can secure that a transfer of power can be executed both peacefully and without economic depression. Ah, peace, right. After that, we're able to approach the Mwami in peace. After much deliberation, our administration has begrudgingly come to the decision to approach the Mwami, the people that were burning everything to the ground, and his forces with some semblance of respect and poise in order to peacefully hammer out a resolution to our current conflict. To achieve this admiral goal, we called him His Highness to our colonial capital so that they may discuss terms for peace. If these peace talks get anywhere, however, remains to be seen. What we're going to want to do at this point is make a beeline down here from elections, abolish the invisible color gap to actually support the local population, and down here to the Technical University of Elizabethville so that we can actually get some research. We need to get that, and then after that, beeline down African Army to found Military Academy of Elizabethville because two research slots, again, is absolutely murdering us. So we we need to actually fix this. And the Mwami accepts. Wonderful. See? Peaceful. Peaceful time. No chaos. Just peace. Free elections are a thing. The Ristot now holds local elections. For the first time in the Ristot's history, free and fair, I'm going to say that with relative terms, elections were open to both black and white citizens of the Congo, and that will decide on a new civilian prime minister who will help shape the new direction of the long-standing colonial regime. The Catholic missions and colonial old guard have proposed that Pierre Rickmans, or his high-valued right-hand man, Leon Petillion, will take this prestigious position, while the overbearing monopoly that is the UHMK has instead urged the voters to choose Edgar Sengir instead. In sharp contrast to both these movements, the new and growing African Workers Party under the lead of Leonard Mpoyi and Daniel Kanza was also announced their bid for the position, as well as having been swaying voters among the sit indigene. Although after this election, Leo Petillion will be surely secure in charge of the Congo, he will have new advisors and allies he must now listen to if the Congo is to stay stable. So basically, go with the old guards, go with the new age progressives, go with the capitalists, or we're gonna go in line a little bit with the socialists. Hmm, who are the native African? Interesting. Yeah, I think we're going with the African Workers Party, buddy. Support the Africans, abolish the invisible color gap. While unlike the British or French colonies, there was never a distinct color gap in the Congo. A glass ceiling blocked the Congolese from reaching high administrative or political positions. Yeah, there wasn't a gap because they couldn't see it in the first place because they had their limbs hacked off for not meeting rubber quotas. To combat the unrest that this has caused, the new progressive government has started efforts to break through these traditions and has started to train Ibelais to replace some of the strictly European posts. Football in the Congo. Wait, what? Due to Belgian influence and Catholic missionaries from the West Flanders, football is now slowly becoming the most important religion in the Congo. Congo. Organized by Père Raphael de Coutelle, football matches and small championships are held throughout Elizabethville. Through growing mining cities and the continued education policy of our governor, the pair hopes to improve the social promotion of the Africans and has requested the government to further expand his vision of creation of the Association of Sportive Congolese. <laughs> All right. Oh, it looks like everyone over here was going with dispersed industry, which kind of sucks for me. We are not going to be attacked by hardly anything, so concentrated industry is going to be the best bet for us. Whoa, 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 who's just a commune? No, France is just I don't want involved in any of this crap. Please, leave me alone, France. Recognition of the Flemish Wallonian Football Association. The FWFA has eagerly observed the growing popularity of football in the Congo and has decided to pump further funding into the association's support of Congolese. Is there any events that we actually get from this? No, we're just building a bunch of, it's just a bunch of flavor events for like building football associations and infrastructure. That's what we need. Full annexation into Middle Africa. Our administration is fiery debate deliberation today is a stressing offer has come from Dar es Salaam. Either pay an exorbitant fee or keep our economy. Oh, bruh, bruh. Do you nearly bankrupt our government and or lose our veneer and sovereignty? No, no, no. Send the damn money. No, no, we're, we're, we're not doing that. No. Bruh, I'm going to dissolve you, you little prick. Wait a minute. Hold on. That's go Goring. Goring is the guy who's in charge. Really? <laughs> I didn't realize that Goring was actually the person who's in charge. Okay, for like big World War II figure. So that's where he goes in this game. Interesting. All right, the next step after getting this university is that we are going to need to beeline down our army path to get another research slot. Because the thing is, when looking at all this, if you go down the colonial path, then that means that you can go with a European army, which gives you some, you know, somewhat decent bonuses here. But honestly, no, an African army, non-core manpower plus 2%, division org plus 10, and recovery rate plus 10? Oh, this is so much better. The end of colonial is a 
approaching, and we need to secure a well-trained core bolstered with loyal officers to make sure that the nation doesn't fall into disarray after our departure. Yeah, of course, that's exactly what we want. At the same time that all this is going down, just as a heads up for anyone who is watching, the reason why I'm building up everything that I need here in the heart of the Congo is because from what I understand when the Civil War breaks out is that the territory that we're going to want to control is going to be over here, and that is why all development and boosting that I am doing is over on this side, which is going to make it significantly easier for us to secure things once the Civil War actually breaks out. This is the other reason why, from the very beginning of the game, I am selling literally every single bit of guns and anything that I make, because that's boosting my construction, and meaning that when a Civil War does break out, I'm not going to have to worry about any of it. I can instead just build up my state. Emperor Hirohito assassinated! Oh my lord! They're getting spicy over there in Japan then. And there we have it, the Military Academy of Elizabethville. With that all done, that means we're going to have a couple options here. We can go down here and focus on building up our civilian factories even more. We can go over here and get some mill factories, which is nice because I mean, we can then just sell the equipment. But also, the issue then becomes that when Civil War breaks out, we won't necessarily be in control of all of those things. Hmm, well, for further construction, I'm going to go down the Congolese melting pot and then improve native living standards because we want to support the people who, in turn, are not going to support us for all that much longer, I think. And with the Congolese Belgian melting pot done, that means it's time to improve the native living standards. Immediately after that, I'd say that we want to go down here to secure the Kivu Reserve, since that's going to be one of our big sources for anything here. We want to build up our civilian factories, we want to build up more of our resources, and simultaneously build up infrastructure, because though we've endeavored greatly to build up the Congolese economy, our few cities and industrial centers are like islands dotting a sieve and the trees. We must lay down new railroad tracks through the Congo rainforest and the surrounding monsoon forests and savannas to interconnect the disparate and drifting islands of civilization. Yes. It is actually insane just how strong of an economy I have here right now. I mean, 17% consumer goods plus 75% construction. This is, this is some truly wild stuff here, actually. Assassination attempt on Père Ophel. Oh no, oh no, this is the guy who's trying to oversee everything for the football association. That's not good. Let's get a little spicy then. Next up after that, building up an arsenal. Beautiful. Umelia Belly against the UMHK. After getting caught for stealing a bed, seven chairs, five tables, and even a wash basin, Muhammad Abeli has been brought to trial for repeated theft and trade with the black market. She countered that due to the reforms pushed by the UMHK after the Black Monday scandal, many of the workers can't afford their life necessities anymore and that she result or no, and that she resulted in stealing to sustain her family. Support for her case has been growing in the Sit in Dijne, where many more miners have fallen in rough times after firing of 300 miners last year. Oh, yeah, but wh why did you need to steal five tables? How, how does that make sense? Further scandals in the UMHK. <laughs> it's getting worse. Fire all the overseers, because a study in the Elizabethville paper has been published outlining the atrocities committed by the UMHK against the Hutu population of Rwanda by promising them wealth and success, many unemployed men have traveled to Elizabethville to be employed in the mines, insisting that they are naturally protected against low oxygen environments due to their mountainous home and don't need the shimmers of a pair to acclimate to the situation down below. Many of the men have died from loss of oxygen or malaria and were secretly buried away from the general public. Now the study has leaked out the population of Elizabethville, resulting in massive strikes against the UMHK until better working conditions can be guaranteed. Over the colonial government, debate is also a Occurring over the replacement of the of the chefs in the mine operation. Oh no, you mean chefs? Chiefs? Yeah, they should be the chiefs. It's misspelled. Chiefs in the mine operation or chief in the mine of question to deter exploding anti-colonialist thought. Fire them all. This is a mess. Wait, whoa, 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 what is this? Hostland declared war on the Nigerian Free State. Deutsche West Africa declared war on Georgia. Oh, 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 Middle Africa. Middle Africa is collapsing. Hey, hey, that is happening. Okay, does that mean it's all going to occur for us? I think it does. Yup, here it is, the Congo Civil War. Communications with Dar es Salaam have gone dark as a wave of chaos sweeps over Middle Africa. The interconnected patchwork of tribal chiefdoms, protectorates, and colonial holdings has seemingly deteriorated overnight, and darkness reigns across Africa. Within our own borders, various separatist movements have taken to the opportunity to revolt against our rightful rule. To the north, in Coquitaville, a mercenary state rises to oppose our rule, while in the east, the Kivu clique and the native Congolese seek to throw off the shackles of colonialism. God, that was a big burp. Ruining a dramatic moment. Seizing on this moment of weakness, Leopoldville to the west has seceded, taking only, our only sea access with them. While the Miners' Union of the south, jungles have declared autonomy from our administration to further their own interests. The Congolese Civil War has begun. May God help us all. So, all right, we can stand by the Belgians and Patillion, we can side with the mercenaries, we can run to the Kibu clique, the one hope of native Congolese that have itself rule. We can go with 
the uh, the miners, or we can go with well the Leopoldville the the trade thing over here. Okay. Well, at this point, I suppose there's only one option. We're gonna support the natives of the Kivu Click, which is these guys over here. But we want to make things as easy as possible for them because it actually it's really hurting them right now. They they are uh, uh they're not exactly in a good position. So first off, we're gonna cancel all the contracts here for everything. That's gonna give us back a surplus of equipment, and then next step is we are going to go and destroy all of this just as rapidly as we possibly can. I'll leave the trains because I'm actually going to go capture those and that doesn't really matter. But by destroying everything else, this means that even with our supply here, we had built up all these military factories, but we lost control of most of them, meaning I will only be able to produce guns. We concentrated all of our development over here in the Kivu Click, so that is exactly where we're going to go. To the Kivu Click, we arise. Oh, buddy. Buddy, I love your hat. Louis de Gonzague Bono or Bobozo. Bobozo. You bozo. I'm going to call you Bozo from now on. The last thing that young Bobozo imagined in his career as a German Ascari is to be leading one of the biggest states in the now free Africa. Born in the later years of the Belgian Congo and then Middle Africa, he was enthralled by the discipline and exploits of the Ascari. He signed up in the 1933 and quickly rose up to the ranks through his great leadership and skills after quashing several revolts and guerrilla groups on behalf of his Hunnic masters. However, his true loyalty was always to his people. When the governor of the Congo ordered his division to pacify Kivu and his home state of the Northwest with senseless brutality, he decided to stand up for his people by organizing a mutiny. Despite his really young age, he rallied most of the Congo's African majority armies under his banner and overthrew their German masters. Now young Bobozo stands at a crossroads. His fledging clique is surrounded on all sides by enemies and his government is rife with incompetence due to his lack of political experience from his young age. Will the Kibu clique lead the Congo to its deserved glory or will it fall to the other warlords and tribes vying for the same level of power? Oh, oh nice. All right, well, first things first that we're gonna need to do in here let's see our backs to the wall reliance on mercenary is going to increase or we can focus on down this side here and actually secure some factories yeah yeah i think i think that we're going to want to do this initially here Let, let's go ahead and secure some weapons we can produce some weapons right now but not really much so at least that's something for us and simultaneously at least we have a couple civilian factories Wait, can I build anything? No, I, I literally can't build anything because I already developed Kiwi so much. Okay, we're gonna take all these troops. Why has this been decommissioned? Go ahead and fix that. And then we are going to need some troops as rapidly as possible. I'm not really producing many, many weapons. I'm only producing one because it's that weak. But okay, all right, we're, we're gonna need to get that fixed. Let's go ahead and begin this. Wait, why Why can I not assign these troops? Why can I not assign them to an army? What is going on? Oh, there it is. Okay, okay, now I can. There's a little bit of a delay. I have to wait a day for this to do this. Congo Vristat declares war on the Union Minaire, Leopoldville, and literally everything around us. Okay, we're gonna need to move fast. Let's go ahead and take all of our troops, slap this into an army. And we have a lot of low-level generals here from the very beginning, but from what I can see, we actually have some really strong traits. Check this out. We start with adaptable. Oh, that is huge. That is really big. Okay, our general is going to be naturally Mapoyi, since he seems to be very good at this. And on top of that, we should have another adaptable leader become the overall commander, at least when we're able to. Okay, we need to build up the manpower for that in the first place. Go ahead and surround things on all sides. Prepare to move our troops outwards. And quick, let us try and spam in here as much as possible and see if we can take over and protect some of our territory. All right, we're going to snake out here as rapidly as possible. This is why we deleted all of those forces here before, so that I would be able to just throw them out there as quickly as we could. All right, let's get this going. All right, rapidly take all this territory. Beautiful. Natives rage. Oh, I just skipped the event. The natives are raging. Everyone is revolting. We cannot take everything here, but they're going to slowly move into our territory, and we need to avoid that as much as possible. Here we go. Go ahead, move in, defend, try and wipe out as many of these guys as possible. Nope, the mercenaries are attacking me. I do not like that. All right, all right, all right. Retreat back if you can. We need to consolidate our control over all of this territory as quickly as we can. Secure weapons of war. Beautiful. All right, next up after that, uh, non aggression pack with Gordrignia. Sure, I, yeah, I don't care. Why not? Go for that. Next up after that, reach out to the international market, and we should be able to start producing at least some weapons, I think. That should give us a little bit of a surplus. 
I hope. Oh, yep, nope. Middle Africa has been called in as our enemy. That's not good. All I can do, literally the only option that I have, is to try and create as much confusion as possible. All right, come on, come on, come on. It's a massive confusing mess. Oh my God, Congo Kingdom declared war. It's all breaking out. Everything is falling apart. Yes, yes, yes. Break apart Middle Africa. Thank you. That secures us at least a white piece with Dutch Middle Africa, so I don't have to worry about that aspect. And we can immediately then focus on securing our border over here. Okay, reach out to the international market. It, that at least gets me some goods over on that side and uh, salvage the arsenals. Let's go ahead and get some more mill factories going. I need to build up as many guns as I possibly can because, oh lord, am I do, do I not have enough? How close are they to fall? They're not even halfway. Are you kidding me? Come on. This is so micro intensive, but I have to do this as fast as I can because if I run out of time, then I will be in such a bad position. All right, there we go. That is the Congo at least taken down and we've actually seized the majority of it because of our rapid movements. That was brilliant tactically for us. Okay, we can now seize the majority of that. And with the Congo seized, that means we can now focus on this end on the mercenaries, which the mercenaries... Oh God, they're actually building up a decent amount of forces. Okay, we are going to need to take them out as quickly as possible. We need as much production and equipment out here as possible. And that gave me about 3000 guns. Okay, that's decent. Cavalry division, let's go ahead and spam out several of you because I'll need to make some rapid attacks upon all the territory. Let's go ahead and do this. Next up to that, bringing in the mercenaries. Soldiers of fortune offer their services to whoever sign their paychecks. In these separate times, we can't turn away those who are willing to fight in the bush and the jungles of the Congo in exchange for cash. Yeah, because Lord knows this is, uh, this is a really tight balance that I have to run here. All right, there we go. Surround them on all sides. We outnumber them right now. We outnumber them. We just need to be smart about this. We just need to be smart and let them try to take as much territory moving into our spot as we can so that I can hopefully take out all of the victory points. All right, there is bringing in the mercenaries. That's going to give us three divisions that I can throw onto this quickly. And at this point, we're going to need to promote a field marshal. Let's see, guerrilla fighter, politically connected. Bob uh, Bobozo could be in charge, but no, no. What we want is someone who is also perhaps a Adaptable. There he is, Isaac Kalonji. All right, there's our capital now taken. Beautiful. Okay, how close are they to falling? Really close, which is funny then that our next focus immediately after that is our backs to the wall. We have nowhere to fall back to and no allies to call for. It is us against all the Congo for this war for the dark heart of Africa. All right, I just need to hold out here as much as I possibly can. The more that I trap these forces, the better it's ultimately going to end up being for me. I just need to move in here as quickly as I can. Come on, just take that capital. That should be the last point of theirs. We can just hold out on the victory points. Don't let them move from here. No, they still, own, what do they still own? What victory point do they still have? Come on, just pin them, just pin them in place. That's all we need to do. You pin them, we destroy them, and then we'll be able to actually capture and we completely outnumber their forces and taken all the points now. Please, for the love of God, mercenaries fall. You are so close. Yes, there we go. 898 guns, more trucks. We are taking everything. Beautiful. And the Congo with that is secured. Excellent. Immediately after that, as soon as this focus actually completes, because we're doing remarkably well, we get to burn the exploitative hives, meaning we get to go and destroy the mines. You know, who need, really needs those? And drive out the imperialist from them. Wait, actually, is that is that down here? Hold up. G Garan Gaze. What, what is that? Yeah, that is. Okay, that is the one that I'm thinking about down here. I have not seen that form before. I thought it was the mining operations. Well, that's, oh my god, the War of the Congo fixed itself faster than I've ever seen in anything from any of the other plays I've had. One who stops the flow of rivers. The Dark Continent is home to many mysteries and unexplainable phenomena. From the magics and wardings of Africa, many witch doctors are seen in Gabon, Equatorial Guinea, Kenya, Congo, and beyond. To the reports of all manners of certain spirits and beasts being cited or even worshipped, like the Mamao's infamous ghost goat. However, one such mystery of nature that has captivated many, especially in the West, is that of Mokole Mbembe, the one who stops the flow of rivers, a water-dwelling entity that supposedly lies in the Congo River Basin. Though he has alleged sightings out as far as Gabon, Zambia, and Cameroon, Mokole Mbembe is is it conflictingly referred to as a spirit or a living creature out of time equally. But regardless of its origin, it is most commonly described as a large quadrupedal herbivore with smooth skin, a long neck, and either a single tooth or horn atop its head as it was a prehistoric, as if it were a prehistoric sauropod dinosaur stuck in the modern age. <laughs> Wait, so we can, we can search for this thing? Fund a new expedition to find the legendary creature. Wait, there's a 50% chance we could find something? Dude, I'll go for that. Even if I lose it, I don't care. Let's see what happens. Because in our case, next step, time to destroy the mines. Are we going to find a dinosaur? No, 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 we're not. Expeditionary woes. After weeks of searching, it did not work. Oh, what a colossal waste of time. <laughs> 
<laughs> they just found a bunch of blood sucking leeches. All right, well, that's fun. Earn the exploitive hives done. Next up after that, retake the gem. Take Leopoldville. All right, let's see here. Miners, get wrecked. Wait a minute, this is not the mining companies, right? Is it? No, it's still market liberals, but it's, it's the Mwami guy. He's the one who took charge. Ah, interesting. That would be another fascinating one that I could have done. Oh, man. No, either way, this will be an easy strike because we, um, yeah, we drastically outnumber them. The greatest threat that we faced in this was the mercenaries, and we took those out very quickly. And Garangaze collapses. They don't hardly have any equipment whatsoever, but you know what? It's fine. We're able to just seize everything down here anyway. Beautiful. All of it is cores for us, I think. Which means in turn, oh my god, even more mining and resources. Are you kidding me? There's so many bonuses. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The final step, take Leopoldville. With the gem justified on, that means that we can truly make it shine. Or that could just be blood on the floor. The native wave. What we lack in equipment and supplies, we more than make up for in sheer numbers. That's right. Let's see, there's some forces surrounded. Okay, all right, all right. They're building up some decent defenses on here on the side from what I can see. But it's okay, because as long as I hold out here, ah, I should be able to seize these things behind them. Honoring the Congolese 32. During the Great War, 32 native Congolese force public soldiers were honored with being the first black volunteer officers in Belgium's forces. Serving through the nerve-wracking Holy Wait and into the true fires of war as the Battle of Serre and beyond, and through the Entente, or and though, although the Entente might have lost the war, we shall honor these true heroes of the Congo just the same. Joseph Adipanga, Pierre Alaman. Oh wait, no, it's listing every single one of these. I'm not going to read through all that, but it still is a lot. Each and every one of these men are true champions of the Congolese people fighting for the Belgian colonials in the hope of earning better conditions back home as our people languished under imperialism. Beautiful. Yes. And the final step on here, the final push to freedom. More speed, more attrition, but more recon, more attack, more defense. And wait, mercenaries Congo surrender limit minus 40%. Oh, surrender limit for all of them reduced. Yes. The Ascari Native Kingdom tribe shall be rallied and aroused while our forces pour into the Congo's thickets. Yes, let's do this. Wait, we need to push through as rapidly as we can. Do not let them hold us. We have to push. Come on, continuous fighting, continuous fighting. We are drafting our population. We are sending them in. Rally the cities. Wait, hold on. Did they, they leave a gap? No, I can't do that. Okay, we're going to be fighting in here forever because they won't actually be able to break through here. We need to weaken their position as much as possible. So here's what we're going to do. Let them spread out. Let them spread out through the through the Congo. The all cells ultimatum is occurring and war is happening. Just go ahead and retreat back as much as you can. And it's the final offensive. Standing atop a flatbed of a supply truck, balancing on boxes of munitions and medical supplies, the young General Louis de Gonzague Bobozo gave an impassioned speech to his men. Surrounding their commander and looking on through bandage of black eyes, the haggard but veteran soldiers of the ANC hung on to every word of their favorite superior officer, who was howling words of patriotism in the bum some bombastic and grandiose speech, which he was already well way through. Battle after battle, victory after victory, we've clawed our way from the bottom of hell, slaughtering our many foes, fighting tooth and nail, never ceasing our duty to deliver salvation to our Congo. I stand before you now, not as your commanding officer and not as the national father of our nearly born nation, but as a fellow child of the Congo on this eve of our final victory. Just miles away lies the vast main pockets of resistance, populated by vile colonials who have spat on our customs, who have, well, I'm not going to list all these these kinds of things in here because, yeah, they, they did all these things and simultaneously, I don't don't know what to say these things on YouTube. Still though, nice speech. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna retreat back. We're gonna nationalize as many resources as we can. And now we're gonna move forward into Leopoldville. All right, let's see, hold on. What do we even have in here? All these should be, I completely forgot that I was recruiting cavalry this entire time. Yeah, let's just uh, take half these divisions, throw them onto the line, and that should actually help us here. The rising star of Kivu, that's right. We got this here. Confiscate civilian vehicles. It'll give us some more trucks so we can actually work with things on the side. In fact, can I, can I do partial stuff in here? Here for supplies. Yeah, okay, I am able to actually at least provide some of that here. There we go, rush to declare war on everyone, but we've broken through on this side. And after confiscating civilian vehicles, it's time to embrace a legitimate martial tradition. We are no longer tribes. We are actually gonna move forward and be able to properly attack. The fall of Leopoldville, we should be able to do it. Did that do it? No, no, are you kidding me? It's so close. Please, please, for the love of God, let me finish this. Come on, yeah, come on, come on, come on. There's the martial tradition. Leopoldville has capitulated. With that, we get to seize everything, and the Congo is once again made whole. Beautiful. September 26, 1939. That was probably the biggest fight that we've had in here yet, but the Congo is once again free and under our new management. Yes, my friends, it is our place 
on the world stage. Victory stands before us. The Congo is ours. Now that we have pacified this mighty land, we must look forward to the future. Will we stand with the Entente, the Germans, the King, or the Kaiser? Or will we forge our own path in the world? We must decide soon. We did it. And we are just about as staple as one would expect in that scenario. Home rule is earned through blood. Our honored warriors have achieved victory over a near insurmountable foe, and now our troops and our standards hang triumphantly over the jungles and city squares throughout the Congo. Our revolt against the Kaiser's collapsing con colonial regime has been successful, and now we have control over the Congo in its entirety after vicious and heroically fighting a guerrilla war against the various factions that wish to continue to keep fighting under the colonial boot. Now with the rights of the first natives finally being put first as we seize the mandate to rule ourselves, we'll finally have the ability to steer what our future shall be. Freedom at last. Beautiful. Oh my god, the Congo has so many resources. That's actually incredibly nice down here. Okay, yeah, that's where most of our income is going to be coming from here in order to be able to, uh, to boost things along. So that's what we're going to do. We're no longer reliant on mercenaries. We've fixed our entire government. Oh, that's amazing. Our place on the world stage. It is fixed. We no longer have the, uh, the, the collapsed economy, but we do have a bunch of other really bad effects. Yeah, we post-war devastation is not exactly the kindest thing. All right, let's see. What is it that we can do here now? Telama, Bessi, Congo. I also realized at this time I lost literally everything that I built up from my previous state, so that's, uh, that's something. I lost all my research slots. I, I, I lost all of my production. Are we truly better off? I hate to ask that. Next step, a dance of Evelais and Ascari. With their independence secure, the Congolese people now stand at a crossroads. The general that has actually led us to this victory, Louis de Gonzaga Bobozo has led the newly birthed Army Nationale Congolaise, the ANC, from the ruins of the old white-led Ascari command structure. And with his military efficacy, this young but charismatic soldier has ruled as the de facto ruler of this so-called Kivu clique. However, the cries of a newborn democratic movement gnaw away at the stability of the nation each day as nationalist and socialist elements bubble and ferment under our society's surface. The Congo, once again, sits on the edge of drastic change. So here we are presented with an option. A guided state or free democracy. With our independence secured and the horrors of the Congo Civil War finally fading into memory, the young general has to now decide whether or not we want to go with, you know, him being in charge, or to open ourselves up to democracy. Well, well, we fought for the freedom of everyone, so why not get everyone involved? Free elections must be held to finally give the people of Congo a voice. Let's do it. The most pressing pre-election issue, with the first elections of our infant until democracy inching close from the horizon, the swelling elephant of the room must be addressed. The MNC, or Movement National Congolais, is currently the largest unified party, with the Kivu clique and the wider Congo for that matter, with its support base including many of the non ivile population. Though many prominent politicians have been able to carve out a strong political base beneath the shadow of the MNC, like Kasavubu or the Bole Congo, the MNC and its leader, Isaac Olingi, loom over the Congolese politics like a specter. Preaching nationalist and socialist rhetoric from across the spectrum, the MNC is a mixed bag, but all expect this monopoly believe political power to win near any election for the foreseeable future. However, the young General Bobozo, in his stipulation for stepping down and allowing the elections to be organized, demand that the socialist elements of the MNC be banned and not allowed to run in the first elections of the Congo. Hmm. Yeah. Ban them. That should work out well. Oh, oh, by getting rid of them, that actually meant that the MNC lost a huge amount of their support base since they were banned, which meant that they completely lost the election. So we have to choose now between three different things, whether we go with the social liberals, whether we go with the market liberals or these social conservatives. Wow, it's actually really simple for this. Hmm. Market liberals, but gets the event, the lions of the Congo roar to life. We found a 50 damn foot snake. It rose 10 feet into the air as if to strike the helicopter. Wow, okay, that is pretty freaky. But is that based on a real event? Did that actually happen? I'm gonna need to look this up, and if that's the case, that's probably gonna end up being a short. Oh, wait, here it is. The lions of the Congo roar to life. We apparently pissed off the socialists here, and that's a little bit of a problem, I guess, because in the jungle, the true- Gabby, Gabby, Gabby. Okay, my wife is interrupting me right now to start quoting the lion. King, guess what, Gabby? That's exactly what this is. This is an event that every single thing around it is based on the Lion King. That's right, folks. You watched this entire video specifically to get to this exact moment. This entire focus tree is a reference to the Lion King. Because, <clears throat> in the jungle, the true lions of the Congo stalk their prey, and there can be no sleeping tonight, for the time to free the Congo and its people has finally arrived. The Simbas roar at dawn, and the Congolese revolution is finally upon us. Across yes, yes, right. I get that's exactly what's happening, Gabby. Across the Kivu in the wider oriental region of the Eastern Congo, socialist revolutionaries of various backgrounds and creeds have banded together under the banner of the Bant MNC, calling themselves the Army Populaire de Liberation, or more colloquially, the Simbas. 
the Swahili word for great lion. Growing enraged over the colonial regime and then by betrayal of the Kivu clique's nascent democracy in its decision to ban the MNC from running in the first elections, Isaac Kolonji, along with a handful of other prominent socialists and radical left-wing nationalists, have banded together to topple this corrupt and uprun representative democracy before it can begin. Though the Honorable Jean Bolicongo tried to work towards a peaceful solution with his old friends that headed the MNC like Isaac Kolonji and Cyril Adula, the damage was already done. And so the Simbas, under Kolonji, have taken arms against the government. Now, with the fate of Africa's darkest hearts now at stake, superstitious revolutionaries shall combat the professionally trained ANC, or Army Nationale Congolais, in a duel of fates with the very future of Africa's largest former colony and the lives of millions of people hanging in the balance. All for a Lion's King reference. That's right. We shall naturally play as the Simba's Revolt, because of course we will. Which gives us the focus tree of the Lions of the Congo Roar. The Congo and its people have only known war for what seems now like an eternity, and yet once more, the sounds of Gunfire and artillery shells tearing through the air. She'll greet our waking citizens like the roar of some monstrous beast. This beast is no mere colonial or mercenary, however, for the true kings of the jungles have begun to stir. Cast out by the incumbent regime, despite making up a majority of the voting population, the members of the MNC have taken up arms against their former brothers. The lines of the Congo rally and roar for the Simba revolt has begun. All right, with that being done, that's gonna give us the option to start balancing things here with dealing with the Simba revolt, right? Yeah, okay. Entice enlistment, asymmetrical tactics, raid colonial armories. Ooh. Yep, let's go ahead and get all this done. I can only select one at a time as time goes on, and I also can't select anything with a national focus, but you know what? We'll deal with it. A necessary lie. As the rebellion of the Simbas carries on their flight to liberate the desperate people of the combo, it's become clear with every passing day the inadequacies of the average warrior due to a number of factors, be it the lack of combat veterans, most of which sided with the government due to the influence of the young general, the general lack of weapons of more advanced than spears, or the overwhelming lack of any kind of industry. It's not a shock why the revolt is mainly centered in the jungles of the East. These problems have not gone unnoticed by the leadership of the revolt, the MNC, and they, an substantially nationalist and vaguely left-wing political party, has decided, in the name of the people and in the hopes of gaining some semblance of victory, to start playing up their socialist leanings to gain the attention of the Internationale. And we're going to get their help. By no means is the MNC a truly socialist organization, besides perhaps a few fringe well-read members. Indeed, the party's most left-wing policies would be considered by no means truly socialistic, even by the most liberal definition. However, the world at large is largely ignorant of this. Due to the party's newness and the general chaos that is post-collapse Africa, the world considers, if it considers at all, the MNC a socialist organization, and this suits the Simba leadership just fine. Already, the Internationale has been in talks with the MNC regarding aid, which they've all been too happy to accept, regardless of the cost. Included in the aid would be a joint military mission, and to help train and get the Simbas in fighting shape, the head of the military mission is rumored to be T.E. Lawrence, famed hero of the Welt Creek who led Arab tribes in revolt against the Ottoman Empire. Other notable members Members of the mission are said to be the Italian revolutionary Giacomo Mattioli, as well as Nestor Makono, exiled Ukrainian revolutionary and famed leader of the Makovshina. So we're going to get help from them, but it's going to cost 35% of all minerals in the country. Oh, damn. That is, that is crazy, but yeah, we're going to do it. It's fine. Oh my God, there's so much text. I'm not even going to read all this. If you all want to pause like right now and read the entirety of everything that is on the page, feel free to go ahead and do so. But I'm reading so much from all this. The short of it is that we are getting uh, a lot of training that is coming our way here in the form of, you know, like a different firearms. And apparently some of our troops are so superstitious and using such antiquated weaponry that they believe that it's not actually science. It is magic. <laughs> that is <laughs> the magic will stop bullets. That's the only training we need is witch doctor magic. One of the most popular and widespread of these magics is known as the Dawa blessing. While coming in many shapes and sizes and even changing depending upon the tribe or the witch doctor, broadly the blessing involves the pouring of a mixture of herbs and plants, only a witch doctor knows onto a warrior, along with a small mystic drawing of carbon made on his forehead. If this is done correctly, then the warrior does not steal, touch a woman, look back, or feel fear. They will become immune to bullets. If a man who is blessed with the Dawa blessingly does die, he simply felt fear, or so the doctors claim. Wow. Wow. What's interesting about the whole thing with the revolt is I fully expected another war to break out, but that's not what happened. Instead, it's going through all of these events where we then have to be able to click the things as they pop up, and it gradually strengthens the revolt. That's it. There's no actual fighting that is taking place in here. No, we just completely solidify our control over the government. Weird. And yep, last up on here, retake Kinshasa. That's it. It's just literally clicking all these buttons, waiting like, what, half a year for all this that we've been doing? No focus tree, no nothing. Just we click it, click it and take. Oh my God, Goringa has really blown up over on this side. Oh, 
lord, that is actually a little bit concerning for me, huh? I do not like that thought. Nope, I do not like that thought at all. With that, we can now march on Katanga, and immediately after that, we now have the true sons of the Congo. After the Congo's second civil war conflict in less than a decade, the Simba revolutionaries have somehow come out on top, beating back enemies both internally and on the front and earning their place atop the hierarchy in this primordial expanse. Now with the MNC installed to control of the nation and the loose coalition of leftist camps already beginning to unravel, the, fa the time fast approaches for this new Congo to call a Congress and choose its destiny. After the baptism of blood, the future is wide open for this fledging socialist nation. Let's see what happens then. Preparation for the first post-revolt elections. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. The MNC shatters into four main parties here. The true sons of the Congo complete. Now we should have an option that's going to allow us to choose varying different things. The first workers' congress, the Congo. The first workers' congress, the Congo is now officially in session, and the various ministers and representatives of our populace are taking their seats to begin this long or days-long debate that will hammer out the foundations of the new socialist states. The four main candidates on the running for the prime minister's position of our new established Workers' Party's Republic are Isaac Kalonji, the face of the Simba Revolt, and a former priest and now focused on true socialist democracy and the creation of a fair common market. Interesting. Joseph Ilio, Kalonji's protege, who has taken his old mentor's ideology and infused it with more radical nationalist elements while putting less emphasis on the need of the true democracy, Cyril Adula, the conservative anti-radical trade unionist with close ties to the Third International, and finally, Joseph Kasongo, the avowed pan-African nationalist. With each candidate proving their worth and dedication during the conflict for independence, it is expected to be a close and fierce little cycle. But at the end of the summit, the Congo will finally have a stable direction to head towards. Okay, wait, what do we have here? We have a socialist democracy with focuses on combining Christianity and also with, with native African faith. That is interesting. A more hardline approach that seems to emphasize a bunch of the old colonial stuff, which is a little odd here under Adula, so that's interesting here for the syndicalists. The MNCKS, which is going to be, what is this? Is the totalist? Yeah, that's the full-on hardline communists. That is going to remove all stuff for religion. The evils of tribalism to remove any concept of a tribe. Who needs that? And tame the Congo with bureaucracy and the heart of the Pan-African dream. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> the final one after this I'm realizing is the lion sleeps tonight. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, in the, the lion sleeps tonight. Oh, uh ha. -huh. <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter. We're going to reach that regardless here. But look, 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 look. If you want to really try and unite Africa and truly save it from the imperialists, then the heart of the Pan-African dream, the totalists might actually be the best bet. With the foundation of Kazongo's regime only growing stronger and the extent of his near authoritarian powers become more realized, the prime minister, who's begun to fancy himself as the Mze, has begun to, what is the Mze? To be openly espouses Pan-African rhetoric to the wider continent, calling for all like-minded African allies to come together and join forces with the true heralds of the Pan-African dream. Ooh. I think, um, I think we're going to go with the Pan-African nationalists. Yes, yes, Kasongo. Let's do this. First up, ardent anti-clericalism, because we're going to remove religion to gain a research slot and finally boost ourselves here a little bit. The rising red star of the Simbas, within the ranks of the Simbas who fought for our independence, there stands many proud and devilish Kadogos and Junis who served the revolutionary masters well. These little ones, either conscripted, recruited, or press ganged into military service, came from jungle tribes and urban centers across the wider Congo. Though many were slain in conflict, many more still serve our nation admirably, with even large grouping already aging on to become the foundation of a new officer class. Ah, Lumumba! For those of you who don't know, there's a whole thing with the CIA and Lumumba. If you go and check out my history page, I did a whole thing on the Congo here and talked about him and his assassination. Oh man, he began his military career after being press ganged under the command of a low-ranking ANSI officer when he was just 12 years old. Oh boy. Oh boy. He radicalized and became an actual socialist. Interesting. We get him as a general. That is lovely. I definitely want him in charge. Next up after that, Sway Nazarians, the most valuable allies to regime are the so-called Nazarians, a clique of nationalist army officers with the ANC led by Bobozo, preaching a non-socialist form of Pan-African cooperation and a fierce advocate of Congolese nationalism, Bozo and his clique are a natural ally to our new regime. We must control these radicals and influence them with our own ideas, drifting them towards the left as we seek to unify the nationalist movement. Yes, this will help me and it will give me a research slot. That's exactly what I need. The villain that is the clergy, long blamed for spreading the parasitic influence and ideas of the old colonials, missionaries, and other men of the cloth have come under attack across the Congo, largely instigated by the Prime Minister. To crime these foreign agents and blaming them for much of the Congo's ills, any priest, nun, missionary, or other clergyman tied to the European Church Churches, such as the Catholic Church in Congo, the Church of Jesus Christ in Congo, and the Orthodox Church of the Congo have been stripped from their positions, with many of these churches being closed across the nation, and some of them even being burnt down, any inside of them going up in flames with them. Instead, they are to be converted into community centers and schools to guide our new society free of the European devils. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Sweet revenge. Wait, what is this? Though largely defeated numerous times in the past, both by our own forces and by the colonials that preceded us, the rebellious Garangaze of the fallen Yeke kingdom still continues to
Surpri Wait, hold on. That guy escaped? Of Katanga and Kasai, led by the usurper and tyrant Godfried Monungo, these tribalist guerrillas have long prodded at our frontier, but recently become emboldened due to funding from the infamous Moise Chombe, and have moved to occupy an important uranium mine near Shikolobe. Taking matters into his own hands as usual, dusting off his combat skills, honed by forged uh, or honed and forged in the fires of the Congo crisis in the Simba Revolt, Patrice Lumumba and his squad of Congolese veterans personally drove a convoy towards Shikolombe with his squad mates and subordinates Antoine Gizenga, Nicolas Olenga, Gaston in Sumelot, Ildefonso Masengo, and the young Kasogo's duo Maurice Mopolo and Christophe Gimbenye in tow. Arriving at the compound under the cover of night, this band of brothers quickly moved and quietly through the occupied mine, eliminating sleeping guards and distracted rebels with hushed blades and muffled shots. Before an alarm could be sounded or reinforcements be called, Lumumba and his men made their way to the heart of the refinery complex, where they found the tyrant Manungo trying to escape through a window, alerted by a few guards to witness and survive the meticulously orchestrated stealth hit. Panicked by his attackers and with nowhere to go, Nungo jumped from the ledge, seeking freedom, only to find himself cascading towards a drum of refinery acid. As cries of agony and pleas for help escaped liquefying lips and lungs, what once was Manungo was slowly reduced to a whimpering, hissing horror as the pretender Mwami seared, bubbled, and popped in his caustic coffin, a fitting end for the terror of Katanga and instigator of the Kaisenian genocide. Returning to Kanesha victorious, Lumumba and his team were paraded around the city by the masses, raised up in opulent chairs as the people chanted their names. The terrorists were slain the people were safe, the mine was secured, and the Congo was free to prosper uninhibited once again. All thanks to Lumumba. Oh my god. This path is insane. Former foes become new allies. All right, Baboso actually goes and joins us. Nice. We're not losing any of our military people. Oh my lord, the Abyssinian Empire. Ethiopia is rising here. What? Oh man, I cannot actually wait to be able to do more of that. With the end of tribalism, the next step is to make ourselves self-efficient. S sufficient, su sufficient, sufficient. We need to do that. All resources for the Congolese. Erasing the last vestiges of colonialism. Revenge is a dish best served through searing lead and raging infernos. And Prime Minister Kasongo knows this truth well. Seeking to remove the last vestiges of the old imperialist order, Prime Minister Kasongo has declared near total war on colonial remnants in the Congo. Ex-colonials, white mercenaries, imperialist conglomerates like the UMHK, and any other shred of the failed Rishstadt are to be annihilated. Any soul branded a target not smart enough to leave in the allotted one month grace period are to be jailed, tried, and executed as enemies of the Congolese people, and any that run shall simply be cut down. Their armory shall be raided and scavenged, their property brought to the torch, their assets seized in a primal expression of rage-fueled revenge for all the crimes and oppression the imperialists have brought. When all is finished, we shall build our new Congo atop the rivers of blood and ashes of their so-called civilization. <laughs> oh my god. The first Congolese intellectual, Paul Panda Furuna Mufumu, has long been known as the first Congolese intellectual, and for good reason. Born in 1888 in the Bas Congo province during the time of the free, first free state, he was lucky to be the son of a colonial appointed paramount chief, granting him easy access to higher education and colonial positions virtually impossible to get as the average Congolese man. Belgian lieutenant of the force publique Jules de Cher would recognize Ferrana's intellect and aptitude in a variety of academic topics, taking him to Brussels in order to study while also taking custody of Ferrana's sister. In Belgium, he studied horticulture and agriculture, graduating within three years before transferring to a tropical agricultural institute in Paris, becoming the first Congolese to ever receive a higher education diploma in Belgium's history. Interesting. So he's one of the guy that fought for the Belgians and then eventually lost, and returning home from the war, he and his Congolese comrades were war heroes, and eventually formed a group of unbiased old guard officers from the Congo's various military outfits over the years. Using these successes to fuel our infantile economy and to fund the Pan-African cause, Frana would be a perfect addition to our government, if nothing more. Yeah, grant him a position in the cabinet, that seems nice. What's this one? Paul shall lead us into a new age of Pan-African and agrarian excellence. Hold up, hold up. He becomes the leader, and we get war goals on literally everything. Ho, 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 ho. The lion does not sleep tonight, my friends. The lion does not sleep. Yes, let's do this. Hold up. He is now in charge. Paul Panda Farana. Let's do this. I have war goals on literally every state in here, don't I? I do. I literally do. Okay, Tiklen Kleek, are you one of them? I do. <gasps> yes. Barely have any forces. You do. Okay, we're going to start working in here gradually. What about Goring? What, what, what is this? Is this a puppet of anything? No, it's embargoing. It's completely independent. What about its intel? It has a decent number of forces. This is arguably the biggest threat to me. So theoretically, I should just go in and try and take them out as quickly as I possibly can, because with them having to spread out their forces all along the border, I could very easily take them out, I think. All right, let's get some more troops. We're gonna need some more cavalry in here, I'm sure. And then immediately after that, let's prepare to strike. Goringa, yoink. Let's go ahead and finish you off. Pan-African nationalist dreams, everybody. Let's go for it.
Y'all heard that. My dog just freaked out. Quickly, move in as fast as we can. The heart of the Pan-African dream. We need to take everything. Here we go. Give me more weapons. Yes, as much as you possibly can give. I will take all of it. Uh, also, I should probably stop trying to recruit so many units because that's going to be a little bit of a problem for me. I need more guns. Pan-African dreaming. Prime Minister Songo, an avowed Pan-Africanist coming from the camp that seeks to foster individual strains of African nationalism inherent to each nation while coming together in an economic and martial, but not political. You Wait, not political union. Really? Sharing these ideals with the likes of Dena Kimachi, Haile Selassie, Nemandi, and a, a bunch of people. Kasongo has moved to create a new alliance to bind post-collapse states to Africa so as to better defend our interests in our borders from European imperialists. Give the territory to me. Do any of these expire? I don't know if they actually do. It's way too big for my screen to even see. All I know is that I have to push in here as rapidly as I possibly can. And hopefully from this, I'll be able to take out all the enemies around me here. Maybe down to the capital, snake in and see if we can get all these. All right, we just need to do quick little movements, surround them as much as we can, and yeah, this should be good. Pan-African dream, and then the lion sleeps to... Oh, come on. Come on, don't hurt my war support like that. I mean, I'll take the stability here and more construction speed, but <laughs> I don't know why I would get this when I, I need significantly more militancy for all this. So instead, we're going to do the APL rises. More army experience, more command, and from here, we're going to use it to fuel our war industry. Because there we go. That's some of their best units that are trapped right now, and beautiful. That means we're going to be able to break right through this here through the south and they're actually at war with north uh, Nor Nor Rhodesia. it's northern rhodesia wow wow that that is interesting huh well at least that's going to spread out their forces further wait the older statesman the mnc oh, i'm getting another event here to have another guy take leader stability becomes leader no 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 no. I do, i'm not even going to read your description i don't even care what you want you can be a general give me more stability from that i will take that but i don't need anything else thank you you have a good time buddy thanks bye there you go come on come on there we go there's a group wiped shortage of weapons address uh, note from the past for land international support. Ugh, I don't want to have to do this. Oh, wait, no, it's not an either or. I get both. Okay, notes from the past, more land doctrine support. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. They hadn't fully taken over all these territories, meaning I actually freed them by invading them like this. <laughs> I'm not even going to be able to take everything. Okay, well, that's that's not what I expected. Um, huh. There we go. Okay, your your jury nut, something, whatever it is. They, that fell. That allows us to seize a lot of equipment. And from that, we are actually able to take all this territory, which ironically enough from this means that all this territory I thought I was going to take, I'm not actually going to get. I could I could have waited for them to continuously fight and weaken them before I actually took it. But uh, no, I, I, I went the hard choice first because that was probably the biggest threat around me. And with that, everything is taken and our first step to conquest complete. With that being done, ironically, I'm not actually able to pass through Tanganyika or any of the stuff that is on my side. <laughs> Meaning, I will actually need to go and attack them from here, and uh, yeah, th this this isn't gonna do anything for me. So this is, uh, this is gonna take a while. No, wait, I don't get war goals against Tanganyika. Wait, what do I, Buganda, maybe? Are they part, they're part of a, 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 a faction, a pack together. Okay, that's Buganda. Israel! Okay, Rwanda and Tanganyika. A what the frick, man? Israel? Where is Israel? Where is Israel? Literally, where, where is Israel? <laughs> where are they? Oh my god. Israel is Madagascar. Are you kidding? Why is Israel Madagascar? <laughs> Madagascar gets an option to become Israel. What the fuck? even watching okay that is something that we will have to address here in the future i i literally cannot do that right now um that that's not gonna work instead let's do what i probably should have done earlier and focused on consolidating everything else t clen clique time for you to disappear then post-colonial realties now we got to actually choose what it is that we want to do our position on monopolies okay expand the port of matandi oh nice congolese black gold that's all good but in this case socialist economic theories we're gonna need to go ahead and strengthen our bonuses here at home here to actually build an economy that we can use to take over everything. Antique Len Clique conquered. Beautiful. You are gone. That was significantly easier than anything else that we've done. And with that, do I have any options that I can do here? Congolese foreign policy. No, I don't I don't really get anything here. Northern Rhodesia. I could actually just strike at them. Hold up. How many men do they actually have? Eight to sixty. You know what? We could. We could go ahead and do that. But first, I should strengthen myself elsewhere. Let's see. No. Oh, hold on. Nope. Cannot attack Gabon. What about Portugal down here? No, that's they're also in the allies. Hmm, that's gonna be way harder here. 
here. The Atomwa click, don't have a war on there. What about Ubangi Shari? I do have a war goal on you. Hey, what is happening? Did my gang just crash? Nope. Oh, nope. It's the second Russo-Japanese war. Mm, the problem is I have no supply up here until I actually build anything. So you know what? Okay, we are going to forego and not go after these guys here yet. Instead, let's see if I can move on here down to the south, because then potentially next I can overwhelm North Rhodesia from multiple sides. Our final revenge against the Belgians. Wait, what? Flanders, Wallonia, or Belgium, if you prefer Long Range over Congo. From 1885, with the arrival of the villainous King Leopold and the rise of the wretched Free State to the African Front of the Great War, to the arrival of the Germans following their victory. Our Congo has been prey to colonialism and imperialists for decades, but all that has finally been undone. We've secured our Eden, come out victorious in the Congo Crisis, and now stand sovereign under our, or, or over our own jungle paradise in the dark heart of Africa. And yet we still crave more. Millions of Congolese sons and daughters cry for one final act of revenge against our oppressors. And so now we are left with a choice. Do we turn the cheek to these former slave masters and continue to build our paradise and peace here in the Congo, or do we move and set sail from the port of Batani and ride to Brussels to deliver this odd grave justice? <laughs> Um, wait, this will give me a war goal. Okay, I'm not declaring war. I get a war goal. Yes, I will I will take the war goal. <laughs> I will take a war. This is so dumb. They're still a puppet, right? Yeah, they're they're part of the Reich's Pact. Yeah, that means I would have to take on Germany. I can't do that just yet. First, I have to do a little bit of a <clears throat> consolidation, so to speak. Tear down colonial hierarchies, that's right. Barlt's land done. Oh, I can steal some planes and really not much else in terms of equipment, but hey, at least I get something. More resources for me, thank you. Next after that, I'm pretty sure I can strike Rhodesia. They, yeah, they don't have much in here, and it's going to give me claims on all this. Do I have a war goal now? I could just declare war on them right now if I wanted to. Let's do it. As soon as that's all built up, we should be in a good position. Let's just go ahead and go for it. I'm not even waiting. I don't even care. Let's just, let's just go. Let's just go. Just push. Sacrifice all this territory. Let them push into mine. I, I don't even care. Let's sacrifice it all. Come on, let them push in. I don't even care. Just, just take it. Just take it. It's fine. They're about to collapse. It's over. There it goes. Take all their guns, their trains, everything that we need. We connect our lands ever so beautifully. Let's see, my next step after that, I can't go after Rhodesia, Portugal, no, all these are members of the Allies, and I can't exactly deal with them here. That's gonna be a bit too troublesome for me. The Click, yeah, I could go after them, Shari and Cameroon, yeah, yeah, all that could work. Okay, yep, that is what we're gonna be doing next. Extensive conscription, everyone for the army, we need it as rapidly as we can. Ubangi Shari, goodbye to you. Whoa! Oh, hold on, I also declared war on these guys next to me here. Hold up, uh, yeah, you got a decent number of units. Alright, we need to quickly push the these people out. There we go. Ubangashari done. Seize you, yoink. And with that, the next step would be to take out the click here. Because we are creating a proletarian paradise. Ignore all the bodies. It's just it's just fertilizer here to try and fix everything. With the bulk of our initial reforms now in place, we have put the Congo on a firm and straight track towards creating a true worker state. This new paradise shall prioritize its farmers, laborers, and industry work above all else, for they are the backbone of our economy, our nation, and our future. On their shoulders, we have built a prosperous new state filled with the blood of everyone else. Again, just, just ignore it. The Atawama click done. No, uh, wait, hold on. No, I, I can't seize everything. Now I can. Okay, because yeah, they were at war with Cameroon, which I am also at war with and about to murder. Cameroon falls right as the proletariat paradise finishes. Yes. Sees that? Yoink, that's done. And then... Sp Spain. Spain. Now, why, no, why are you there? Also, why is Nigeria the Nigerian Free State? Why is that in the Reichspakt? What, 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 what is this? Sultan of Egypt. Oh my god, I could declare war on Egypt. Uh, huh, huh. I don't know how good any of this is for me, but uh, I could, if I wanted to, now go to take out Ethiopia, which is actually a comparable fight. That might actually be the next genuine fight that I would have here. Victory. The vile colonists have been beaten back. Cameroon is now proud Social estate. The German rats have fled the sinking ship and yielded the Ottawa click. A Congress will be assembled to determine the fate of the nation. This is like the first one that I'm getting in here, actually. Wait, what? The Bornu. Oh. Oh, that's another thing that I could declare war on because that's the whole thing with Egypt here. <laughs> Shoot. Well, probably want to take out Addis Ababa before literally anything else. Big question is now Ethiopia. Can I can I take them out? Could I do this? Could I? It'd be a big risk. They got they have a good amount of units. Their industry is decent, too. Oh, this could be an actual fight. You know what? I want it. Let's do it. Oh, Ethiopia, I want you. I want you so bad. There we go. There's a whole group of them wiped. Let's keep on going. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. There we go. Moving the cavalry quick. We can just seize up the Adirond coast, spread out their lines as much as possible. This means that we'll be able to launch in and seize our own little attacks and strikes. There we go. There's another point seized. And we just need to push past them in order to seize the port. Yep. There we go. Beautiful. As soon as we take that, that's going to provide us with supply. No, 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 no. You're not going to, you're not going to push me out there. I'm taking, that's my territory. I stole that fair and square. There we go. Another one trapped. Let's see the damaged tributaries. Next 
next right after that, a national preserve system for even more construction. Yes, 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 yes. Don't worry, we're building up our own state while simultaneously trying to destroy everything else around us. Also, why am I producing nothing here? What the hell? There we go, just keep on pushing through and attacking the south. Keep on going. The more of them that we're able to surround from every side, the better it is that we're going to be. And more systems wiped, beautiful. Here we go, push on in. Come on, come on, come on, keep on going, keep on going. The more of this that we take, the better it's gonna be. If we take out the, uh, the rest of the Sultanate here, that's gonna trap a whole bunch of their forces on the side. And then we can just sweep on through. There we go, okay, Adrin Sultanate collapses. That means that we can wipe out the rest of these Ethiopian troops that remain here. The tap the great veins of ore. Oh my God, how many resources am I gonna get? They make Africa so much more powerful in this mod, just for the sheer amount of resources that you can actually get to trade. Oh my Lord, screw it, let's go. We don't need to worry about the Ethiopians anymore. Let's just push. Ethiopia falls. Abyssinia, you are mine. Only one entity can be the true king. I mean, um, protector of Africa. Uh, that's right, protector. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. No, 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 you have a navy? Yes, I'll seize a navy. Thank you, thank you, buddy. Very useful for me. Restoration of the United Kingdom. Oh, hey, the UK is back. Okay, well, who cares about the colonialists? Next up on here, restore order in Kenya, Uganda, which we're, we're finally going after Israel. <laughs> Wait, did that say the Islamic State of Harlem declared war on the United States? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> what is this? What is this? <laughs> I, I cannot believe I'm seeing this. How do you get this? I want to play as this next. Uganda collapses. All that done. Yoink, just move on in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Rwanda, gone. Nye yoink. And like that. Fixed. Beautiful. And the Congolese economic miracle completes, which means we, Coward, can finally embrace modernity dawns. Modernity, once an abstract idea to our people forced upon us by the old imperialist system, has now become a new reality. The economy of built from the ashes of colonialism now stands as a beacon of prosperity amidst the rubble of destruction that we have witnessed. Ancestral weapon- Whoa, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Wait, our traditions and unique cultures have birthed fantastical and time-proven weapons to use against our foes, though making guns and other modern weapons requires modern equipment, creating spears, battle axes, traditional shields, and other tribal weaponry is easy and cheap. Combining these simple tools of war with the mystique and savagery of the Simbas, such as their magical wards of power channeling war paints, will create ferocious masses of infantry to throw against our enemy <laughs> oh my god it literally allows me to produce spears which is just it's all of my infantry are gonna get this and this is just gonna add just a little bit of attack and defense to all of them are you kidding me at least it would except for whatever reason my factory output is broken why am i not producing anything this is like the fourth time i've seen this happen and it's not it stops producing anything i don't get it they start with no efficacy and they're not gaining any why aren't they gaining any what is going on oh god no that is it self-sufficiency at any cost Okay. Ah, uh, that's, that's, that's why. What the hell? Okay, well, that's fun then. Just make the lion sleep tonight. I don't know. Just, just have it happen. If I can't produce anything, I've already naval invaded and I can't produce any more equipment. So that means I have whatever I have to just burn everything down. Go. And I don't have enough melee weaponry now to fulfill my garrison requirements. Are you kidding me? Why? What is with, why is this broken? The game is broken. The game is actually legit broken. I literally can't produce anything so i will never actually be able to sustain a garrison what is going on okay maybe maybe if i switched over to dispersed industry that this because this provides a higher base right because like the production efficiency base it starts higher right oh my god that did it are you kidding me i needed to do that the entire time are you freaking kidding me so i lost all of my factory production because of a stupid feature okay 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 I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. What the hell, game? I literally have to start over my entire course of factory production. Thanks. All right. Well, we're just going to take all of you, take the entire Navy, and finally finish that off. Oh, my Lord. It's another revolt. Sudan. Sudan revolts. Uh, I was trying to attack Egypt. I was trying to attack Egypt. Now I got to justify on you, you bastard. And with that, the, um, oh, the Congo tree is actually finished. Huh? Well, damn, there's, uh, there's not really anything for me to do. So why does Tanganyika still exist? I thought I took all of this. Why does this still exist? I took all the states. Why does this still exist? It's even my core state. Why does this exist? I don't even care anymore. Just please finish everything. I, I, I just, I don't. Yoink, that is done. I don't care. I don't care. Finish it.
it. Please. Go. Go, my beautiful motorized. Show them the power of Congolese rubber. They move They move so fast. They move so freaking fast. We don't even have to do anything. It's just immediately surrounding and killing them all. Yep. See, there goes the Sultanate of Egypt, which I actually don't get to do much in here, considering how much I fought. Surprising. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that, that finishes off all that. Mm-hmm. That's over. Legionary France took 24 states, and I, I don't think that I'm in a position here that I can actually fight against that. Uh, yeah, 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 I don't, uh, I don't, I don't think I can fight against that, because for whatever reason, all over the country, despite the fact that I get Annex War Goals on everything, not a single thing that is popping up that actually gives me cores on anything. So I'm a little bit confused, because I thought the whole thing for Pan-Africa was that I would be able to unite Africa. And if I actually got cores on any of this stuff, then that means I would actually have the population to be able to throw into the meat grinder, but I don't. So, you know what? Even though we didn't necessarily get to conquer the entirety of Africa, we did free quite a large portion of it with some weird exceptions. Again, I don't know why the hell this thing did this. I think that this tree might be a little bit bugged because uh, I think that a number of things that are being done with it don't really factor in, like in the case of the whole um, efficiency issue with factories, coupled with the fact that you could get all this pan-African stuff, but then not actually be able to get things here. Like, okay, hold on. Oh, no, wait integrate Rwanda and Burundi. Oh. Oh, I can do at least that. Okay, you can get cores on some of the stuff. Not all the stuff, though. It's weird. It's very weird. Like, I got all these annex war goals against, you know, Ethiopia and everything, and I just, I don't get anything for it. Still, in the end, I would have to say that that was simultaneously one of the most challenging and yet also easy runs I've ever had simultaneously. Like, if you game the system from the beginning, what should be a ridiculously hard fight is something that ends up falling pretty easily, but then simultaneously, if you just misclick for even a second, you can easily get overwhelmed from the micro. So it's it's something that was both extremely fun and yet in the end, a little unsatisfying. Damn, I was expecting more from the Congo here for how it would turn out. I, that makes me a little sad. Either way, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end things here today. It was still a fun game really until then. And I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know in the comment section below what it is that we should do next. And don't worry, we will continue with the A to Z playthrough of Kaiser Redux. Goodbye, my friends, and I'll see you next time.